Okay, I'm just going to get started then today. Um, so again, thank you all for attending this week's webinar. Um, we'll go on to the next slide, James, if you don't mind. ABA has a virtual code of conduct that we will ask you to follow. Um, more information is available on buses.org to read that in full. Just wanted to let you know of some upcoming events for women in buses. Um, on May the 5th is our next scheduled webinar and it is called Soaring Success Opportunities and Reaching Out. On May the 19th, we have the trip from the motor coach industry and travel to politics. A familiar face you will see is um, Joey from formerly from Moustache Tours. Then on um, May, June the 2nd, we have Women in Buses is hosting Women in Trucking Synergies Between Drivers. We also have our next meet and eat, and that is on May the 21st. Just a reminder, the meet and eat is a separate login um, than our Wednesday webinars. Then upcoming in June, we're very excited for our um, summer series for the June webinar week. On the 14th, we kind of a it's our virtual marketplace meeting. We're going to be giving out our Women in Buses awards. Um, we're going to be hearing from ABA and our sponsors. We're going to introduce you to our new leadership team. On June the 15th, the Executive Management Committee um, is going to be hosting a webinar, and it is um, 5311F with Mark from On Your Mark Tour. Then on June 16th, our travel tour and charter committee is going to um, do social media and SEO. And then June the 17th, um, operations and maintenance drivers committee is bringing you motor coach 101 with MCI. This is gonna be the first of a four part series that we're gonna be offering. Um, so this is really geared towards really the basics of motor coach, how to sell it and the safety um, options available on it. So we're encouraging everyone, not just on our maintenance committee, everyone to join in and learn a little bit more on this one. Um, all of these events do need to be registered for in advance on buses.org. They're all going to be at 2 p.m. Eastern time and they're all separate registrations. Okay, so today now is our driving force webinar. So I'm just going to go over briefly the outline and then we'll get started here. Um, so we'll go over what is going, what is exactly is the driving force, um, where we have our information, who's behind it, and um, our roadmap for retention and recruiting and what our tools are. So the driving force um, is a group of individuals created by our Women in Buses Council to aim, aim to tackle the nationwide driver shortage. Who is behind it? So you're going to be hearing from several of our driving force today. We have on um, James Blaine is here today with us, Brent Maitland, myself, Aaron, Pam Martinez, Mike McDonnell, and Mike Van Horn. So you'll be hearing from all of them. So um, where all of our information is currently housed uh, is on buses.org backslash about backslash driving force. You also should be receiving emails as well and we're on our social media. Um, we, for our initial project with driving force, we created a recruitment video um, to really showcase what a motor coach operator is what are the benefits are to driving. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that video right now for you. Drivers are the front line to our customers and their attention to outstanding customer service, safety, and dedication is what leads to the success of a charter business. Created by the Women in Buses Council of the American Bus Association, Driving Force is a program designed to tackle the nationwide driver shortage. It provides industry operators tips and tools to recruit and retain their most valuable asset, drivers. I started as a school bus driver and then I said, well, I think I'm ready to step up. So I saw the motor coach uh, buses and I said, I want to drive those buses. And I took the training during the summer and here I am. 
And I'm telling you, it's it's like uh, like at some point a dream come true, uh, because I I went to places I see a lot of places that I never expect to see. I went to the capital city. I got so emotional. I love it. I I can drive myself around New York City, which was a big challenge for me. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's a, a big accomplishment for me. I'm proud of myself for that. Thanks for the senior drivers that helped me a lot. I love it. I really do love it. And being able to know new people, see places, interact with people, young people, senior people, it's, it's, it's amazing. Some people might think that this is a man's job. I don't think so. I don't think so because if I could do it, anybody can do it, woman and man. Shout out to Datco, Anderson, Arrow, and Annette for giving us those amazing drivers um, to create that video. Uh, we, this video is available on um, buses.org. So, you know, we encourage you to use it to help recruit. And you can put it on your website, put it on your Facebook, whatever you'd like. You can move to the next. Okay, so now I'm going to pass it off to Pam, who's going to take over for culture. So we're going to talk a couple minutes on company culture. What defines a company culture? It really is your company's personality. Things that make up the culture are things like your policies, your procedures, your ethics, your values, employees' behaviors and attitudes, goals, and your code of conduct. Overall, what you want for your culture really is to be perceived as being a great place to work. So when you're recruiting and trying to retain drivers, if you've got, if you're known as a great place to work, 
that's a wonderful thing. When we're talking about ethics and values and employee behavior, things like safety come into play. And we always think of safety as you know, vehicle safety, accidents. But right now, part of your culture is, are you providing a safe place for the employees to work post COVID? Do they feel comfortable? Are you doing temperature checks or making sure employees know not to come to work? Do you have barriers in place? Do you have cleanup kits and the masks being provided? So making sure that you're creating this safe culture for your employees to come to work, that's part of what can make up your culture. And also making employees feel recognized, listened, and valued. They all help to make a, a, a real positive company culture. And that's what you're striving to do. I think I'm gonna pass it on to Brent from here. Yeah, thanks, Pam. So you'll you'll get familiar with the roadmap. And the roadmap really is, is our way just to visualize the major steps in recruiting and retention. It's really the framework, but also by which most of the materials or a lot of the materials that we're going to present uh, really will follow along the roadmap. So you'll see that as a guidepost. And then you know you can use that as your company checklist. So as part of your recruiting and retention process, uh, you'll if you go to the next slide, we'll go into a little bit of detail. So you see just up on top some steps in the upper left to prepare for recruiting and retention, review the roadmap. Uh, feel free to customize it to your company. It's not gonna be the same for everybody. Uh, making sure the leadership team is engaged. And then the points that Pam hit on and is going to tie back to, culture is critical. That's, that's how you wanna find the right people and retain the right people and make sure that um, you know, ultimately they're aligned with and getting value from the, the values of your company. So um, it's broken into the recruiting section on the left and the retention section on the right. And you'll see each of the signposts is what we consider be sort of a major activity or milestone. So with that, we'll go into the recruiting piece of it and just hit on a little bit of detail. So the elevator pitch uh, step one, James is going to go through that momentarily. There's a couple bullet points there that really just highlight some key steps. Developing a company video, second step. Hosting it. Um, posting the job on your career page. Using social media to make sure it's visible and out there. And then also looking to bring in new types of employees by targeting new segments. So those are some sections that we'll go to before then we get into the retention piece. So James. All right. So hopefully everybody on the call has heard of an elevator pitch and marketing. You kind of use your elevator pitch to tell people a little bit about what you do and kind of put yourself out there. You need to have an elevator pitch that's made specifically for hiring as well, because you need to be able to tell these people a little bit about yourselves and get them interested. So there's a couple quick things that we want you to do and some things you probably want to avoid. The first, just like any elevator pitch, you want to keep it short and sweet. You want to highlight what makes you stand out. You want to practice your elevator pitch so that you can just give it right offhand. You don't have to look. You don't have to go anywhere. You're able to just deliver it. You also need to get excited about what you're saying. This is an invitation for people to learn a little bit about you and learn about why they should come drive for you. So you've got to have excitement in your voice, and you've really got to have that culture that Pam talked about kind of show through in that elevator pitch. Now, there's a couple things you want to avoid here. You don't want to be cute or funny. It's okay to be a little imaginative. It's okay to be, you know, a little cute, a little funny. But if you're just trying to make everyone in the room laugh, you're losing sight of what you're trying to do. You also don't want to start all the way back to the first day you were in business and walk them through every single day to get there. You're just trying to give them a little bit of a peek behind the veil and get to let you a little bit. So there's four different things that you want to look at when you're putting together your elevator pitch. You want to quickly and easily identify yourself and your company. You want to briefly explain what you do. You want to tell what makes you unique. And then you want to bring it all together with a question. And like I said, you want to make sure that it reflects who you are. So we'll give you guys a quick example. At Make Believe School Bus Lines, we don't just drive students to and from school. We drive future politicians to their first debate scientists to their first conference, athletes to career making games. You might even be lucky enough to have a future president or an astronaut on board with you. 
That's because at Make Believe School Bus Lines, each and every trip is a chance to help inspire and motivate the next generation. Our team is devoted to making sure that each and every student arrives safely and is ready to learn. If you're looking for an inspiring career change, come join our team and start driving towards a brighter future. Now, of course, as you can see, we did have a bit of fun with this one, but it gives you a little illustration of how you want to appeal, how you want to show through who you are. That's going to lead you directly into the tools you need to then put together and develop your company video. There's four main areas that you want to focus on. Just like with your elevator pitch and almost pre-written for you, if you've done that, you want to give a quick intro to your company. If you think back to the video we just watched, we told a little bit about driving force and what we do. You want to do the same thing for your company. You want to tell a little bit about who you are and what you do. You then want to talk about the job description. And most importantly of all, you've got to follow that up with the testimonials. The most powerful part of the video we all just watched is those drivers talking about what it means to them, how it changed their lives. It's not just a job. It's not just getting behind the wheel. This is a career, and this is something that can change someone's life for the better. So you want your drivers to be able to share that emotion, those sentiments with you. And then you want to wrap it up. Just like we did in our elevator pitch, ask them to take the next step. Ask them to apply. Ask them to click, call, come in, however it is you want them to do that. So now that you've got your elevator pitch, and now that you've got a video, you've got to get that out into the world. One of the easiest ways to do that is to post that onto the various career pages out there and even your own website. You want to make sure that you're doing some key steps there. You want to make sure things are easy to read. You want to include a brief overview of your company. You want to provide a description and a brief paragraph. And then you want to summarize the personality and the characteristics of a good candidate. Like Pam was talking about earlier, you have a company culture. You have who you are. You need to make sure that the people you're looking for fit within that. So help them identify themselves, help them see in themselves the qualities that you're looking for by letting them know what a good fit is and what those good characteristics are. You also want to list the responsibilities of the position. You don't want them to have surprises on what's expected of them, so they need to understand what those roles and responsibilities are. You also need to let them know the location. You need to let them know the requirements and then any additional information on how they need to apply. So I'm not going to go line by line here, but here's an example of a school bus driver listing. We're giving a little bit of information up front about being a part of the community and what's involved. We're also letting them know that we're going to help them get licensed. Then we're giving them an idea of what to expect. What does flexibility look like? What are some of the things that they need to know about wages? Then we've got our qualifications and our skills. We're letting them know exactly who the right person for this job is. And finally, we're wrapping it up with benefits and perks. One of the things to keep in mind in benefits and perks is that you really want to make sure that you're thinking about all the different benefits. So for example, if you're a school bus driver and you're allowed to have children that are riding on that bus with you or, or to be right with you during the day, that's a huge perk. That's not medical. That's not a typical benefit. But for a parent, that could be huge. You also want to let them know things like you're family oriented in terms of the business. Knowing that you're going to work for a family business that truly cares about you is a huge benefit to that driver and anyone that comes to work for you. Here's an example of a motor coach driver. We've taken a little bit different approach in the beginning. Here, we're really trying to take advantage of letting them know the travel opportunity. We're letting them know the major cities they're going to see. We're letting them know that they're going to be out and they're going to be about. And this is a huge benefit to anyone that loves to travel and that wants to get out and see the world. Again, we're going right into those primary responsibilities, the qualifications and skills. And here we've left it open because you guys really have to figure out what the benefits and perks are to your company. What's unique that you can offer these drivers that no one else anywhere can? That's what's really going to draw someone in. So now you've got your elevator pitch, you've got a video, you've hopefully got a solid listing. Now we've got to look at getting it even more out there in the world to reach people. Now we do have a webinar on the 16th, so I'm just going to cover this briefly. That webinar on the 16th is going to be all about social media and SEO. But I wanted to touch on a couple things here. If you look at the social media that we've got sorted, we've sorted them this way on purpose. Kind of in our top tier, you've got Facebook and LinkedIn. Anybody that's got a professional career and anybody that's really online 
has got one of, if not both of these profiles. Then you've got kind of your more active social media that's going to narrow down a little bit younger demographic. You've got Twitter, you've got Instagram. Instagram's going to be heavily driven on photos. If you've got drivers that like to take pictures, this might be good for you. You might be able to have them take scenic pictures when they're stopped. Then you've got your TikTok and Snapchat. This is going to be your youngest demographic. Here you're looking for short and sweet. You're looking for things that are gonna appeal and pop and jump right out of the screen because you know they're scrolling on to the next. Now, depending on who you're looking for and what's right for you is gonna tell you which one of these categories you need to be into. Now, posting a full five minute video into Facebook or LinkedIn about your driver profile makes perfect sense. If you're trying to get at a younger demographic, you might wanna just take short snippets that are going to be those testimonials that kind of hook people in to want to learn more. It really kind of depends on what you're looking for. Regardless, you need to make sure that you're looking at these different opportunities to figure out where to put them, because you can easily share on any of these platforms to help get engagement. And when you share things, anyone else can share that. Friends, family, coworkers, employees, everyone's able to share that out and help get that word out there and can be your strongest asset. There's also other segments you need to look at. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mike Van Horn to help you look. All right. Uh, thanks so much, James. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to cover uh, the military as a segment here. So uh, this is um, a, an area that the bus and coach industry has had a long history with in terms of uh, troop transportation. And I'm sure uh, that many of us have um, veterans uh, as part of our companies today. But um, recently, over the last two or three years, the Department of Defense and the different military branches have really invested a lot in terms of programs for transitioning military to find new careers, uh, helping veterans uh, to get jobs, so on and so forth. So uh, the driving force, uh, our task force really believes that uh, military recruiting is uh, can be a real um, uh, good area for us to put some uh, focus in. Um, as many of you might already uh, have experienced, there's some uh, similar qualities uh, between uh, military in terms of professionalism, responsibility, uh, that are a good match for the motor coach driver uh, profile. Uh, even some of the uh, actual uh, military occupational specialties already have a CDL, which can be transferred over um, to the motor coach driver. Um, so from the uh, task force, we want to uh, provide strategies, tools, and templates to owner operators to, to really uh, ramp up your focus on recruiting. Uh, the segments uh, that, that we're targeting for recruiting are uh, reservists and National Guard. Uh, many of these folks have deployed uh, recently with active duty military and, and once returning are uh, in need of a job and a career. Uh, also veterans and then uh, transitioning military. Many of these folks uh, know that um, they're going to need a new job or a career uh, 6, 12, 18 months uh, before leaving the military. Uh, next slide. So again, you know, um, focusing on the fact that driving force, we want to create uh, tools and templates for the owner operator community. Um, one of the uh, uh, near term uh, things that we're doing is a individual hiring event um, at Camp Pendleton, California. Uh, so myself and Aaron, as, long as, uh, as well as uh, Jody Merritt from H&L, uh, charter in Southern California on May the 12th, we've teamed up with Camp Pendleton where we're going to give um, a recruiting pitch uh, to um, uh, Marines and sailors that are transitioning uh, from Pendleton. Um, so because, it's interesting, we, Jody and I had originally talked about, well, we're going to drive a bus to uh, Pendleton and let the, the Marines hop on the bus. But given the pandemic, uh, this is virtual. So one of the things that we want to do here is we want to extend the invitation. It's an Eventbrite invitation. We want to extend this invitation to all stakeholders across the U.S. Um, to actually see what a uh, recruiting event with the military can look like. Uh, so if you're interested in getting that link, uh, please contact uh, Aaron 
uh, after the webinar today. And then finally, as part of the toolkit, uh, we have the presentation that we'll be giving on May the 12th. And as part of the toolkit, we'll be including that uh, presentation. So you can basically just plug and play where the HNR, or I'm sorry, HNL charter information is. You can just kind of plug in your operator uh, information and job listings and, and have a, a template for a military recruiting event. Some of the other segments that hopefully you're using but maybe have not delved completely into are right here in our own communities. Um, firefighters and police officers, other first responders and, and public service folks, firefighters especially, or many are already credentialed with a CDL, um, and as well as working with the public on an everyday basis in the best of times and the not so good of times. So they really turn out to be great um, candidates to be motor coach and school bus operators. Uh, the couple of things to do in your own individual communities is to find out the composition of your uh, fire service and your police officers, meaning are they career, are they volunteer, are they a little bit of both? And uh, most importantly, what are their shift schedules? Uh, many firefighters will work a, a 24 or 48 hour and then have three or four consecutive days off, which really lends to some time that they can do some work for us. To get into those um, different segments, uh, one of the things I like to do is reach out to their individual unions if they're represented. Many of them have job posting sites on their unions uh, web pages that they use quite frequently. One of the other things that I've done as well is I went to the fire stations that were closest to my terminal and put up a flyer on their job board. They always have a job board within the fire stations and a lot of the police precincts as well because a lot of these public servants uh, rely on a second income or like to do something to keep themselves busy uh, in the meantime as well. Uh, I've had really great success. I've had firefighters, police officers in the Mid-Atlantic. I've had Secret Service agents, um, all, all different types of uh, folks in the public service end that have really, really made great and long-term uh, part-time employees. 55 plus communities is one of those places that, that I come from the tour and travel business that we always went there to solicit, uh, solicit them to ride in the back seats of the bus. Well, there may be some of these folks that are retired or semi-retired that may want to consider sitting in the front seat. Um, we've done some recruiting there and have hired some folks as there as well. We know they have some time on their hands. We know they like to travel. So invite them to join the front seat and not just sit in the back seats of the bus and enjoy the trip as well. One of the things that I've had a lot of success in over the last couple of years um, even not being an operator anymore, is working with driving schools and community colleges. Uh, I sit on the advisory board of two driving schools and one community college that we review the curriculum. And with that, we get first shot at who the graduates are. So, you know, some of the driving schools and community colleges, we went and looked at their curriculums and they maybe they weren't as up to date as they could be. Uh, we also took the folks that were there for mechanical training and also encouraged them to add CDL to that program as well. So that gave it depth as well. One of the things that we did was most of the people who sign up to go to these types of uh, extra uh, education through driving schools and community colleges are there thinking they're gonna drive a truck, truck, truck. So what I do is on the first day of every class rotation, uh, I'm allowed an opportunity as well as other operators. I go and speak on behalf of the industry and let them know what the options are and the availability of drivers on the passenger side and not just the property side. Uh, again, one of the newer ways over the past couple of years, we've made some inroads, but a great way and another unique way that we can find some more people to, uh, to drive our buses. Thanks, Mike. So you've now done a lot of that, got a new hire, and now we really are going to move on to the retention piece and talk about how we make a great first impression and how we make a great lasting impression and ultimately retain these drivers that we invested so much time and effort in. So we'll go through orientation and onboarding, signing a mentor, having great communications, performance feedback, employee engagement and recognition, and then, and then metrics. So next slide, please. So when we, we talk about onboarding and orientation, we, heard, we hear the terms a lot, but really this is, this is the, the way that we're gonna really set the foundation of a great first impression. So 
Onboarding uh, as a term is the entire process of getting your new employee established in the organization to be ready to go out and do the job the way you want need them to do it. Uh, orientation is a part of the onboarding, but typically that's gonna be a limited period of time or an event within there where they learn about the company, the culture, key job responsibilities. And it, it's important for them to start feeling part of the organization at that point in time. So we'll go through each of these. Next one, please. Um, so onboarding, it's really everything that you want your employee to know and, and it's really gonna set the tone for how they're effective within your organization and how they're gonna be outstanding with your customers. So just some key steps there. Make sure that you've got an outline, go into it with a plan, make sure that it's tailored to your company. Um, Pam mentioned culture, we're gonna come back to it, but that really needs to stand out. Think about some of the following, having that elevator pitch or having the overview of the company making sure that they know and you spend time on the expectations. What are your expectations of, as a driver? Uh, what are policies and procedures? What's their training plan? So you can say, hey, you may not, not know all of this yet, but you're going to go to training at this time, at this date with this person, really a critical element to making them feel comfortable. Uh, an important piece of it, just in terms of the outline, sending a welcome letter you know, we talked about so much you hire, you spend the time hiring, and then the person doesn't even show up on the first day. So starting the engagement with a welcome letter, keeping them engaged, getting them excited, making sure they know what's coming. Um, have an orientation agenda, have the training plan, and make sure you're able to articulate what is going to be uh, a factor that's going to make them successful in your company. Next slide, please. So then we move to orientation. This is the event. So what are the activities in the first days or weeks as they prepare to hit the road? Um, start with an agenda, be organized. So back to some of those similar things in the outline, an overview of the company expectations, policies and procedures, trainings could be, you know, could be what safety training you're gonna get. Meeting with different people in the organization. And I think you know, one of the things is we talked about within all of this, what's critical making sure that the leaders of your company or the owners are engaged because nothing really sets the tone for a good culture and to say, hey, this is a company that respects me and my time, then engaging the owners and helping to tell the story of their company um, and what, what pieces are critical. So just take the time and make sure that's a piece of it. Um, Meeting with key functions. So really they should know what all the functions of the, the company are and make sure that they meet with the leads of those. There's probably a training element to that. And then again, what makes a great driver from your view? So as you look across at your best drivers, what are the key elements that, that make them great? And how do we train people and encourage people to deliver that within the organization? So two key things that are just critical as part of this process. Next slide, please. Um, another one that, that really links to it because we talked about, hey, who are those drivers that, that really set the tone? Use those drivers, if possible, as mentors. So a mentor is really an experienced employee that's gonna help this new hire make the transition into your company, make it easier. Uh, the role of the mentor is to show this new driver the ropes, be a helpline if they have questions, how do I do this? Um, you know, and hopefully that really then also builds the bond of camaraderie within the organization. So some steps to that, you know, find the drivers that, that you want that really embody that those uh, cultural aspects and the skill sets select, put them in a mentor program. And I think another benefit is as, as a retention process, having a, a good driver, one of your drivers become a mentor really can be an honor. That's something that you can feature, that you can highlight that, hey, Joe Smith or Betty Smith is a mentor and that's a big deal. Um, make sure that you're clear on the role and the role does include help desk, maybe after hours when they're out doing a some ride-alongs before they're certified to be on the road from your view. Those are elements of the mentorship that can really be critical. 
Next slide, please. A communication plan. So it's part of engaging the employee through the process, uh, but keeping them engaged on what's going on with the company frequently, clearly, especially as we've been through a pandemic, like hearing from owners regularly on what's going on. Are we getting new business? When do we think you're coming back? Like all those elements of regular communication are just critical. So, you know, when you look at what's in the plan, making sure they hear things that are useful to their jobs, making sure they hear things about the company, company strategy. Again, hearing from owners is important and use multiple modes. Many people use newsletters, uh, but some people put it out on Facebook, do a video, use social media, email. Um, there's a lot of ways to get the message out. There's people doing Zoom calls, of course. Um, think about it as two ways, as you think about key steps. Two-way dialogue. So you're giving them info, but also take time to hear how are they doing? Um, what are they learning? Make time, take time to listen, take time to respond, act on the feedback. Uh, certainly let employees share ideas. And then, you know, just think through what type of information you want to highlight. So we've talked through some of that, but again, it's, you know, a lot of people have a template that they do on a, on a regular basis and just refine what works. I think the key is to have it be regular. So employees know that, hey, every certain time, a week, two weeks or whatever, they're going to hear something and that's useful. So really important part of the engagement process. Next slide, please. Uh, performance and feedback. So not only are we communicating what's going on at the company, but we're also getting feedback and giving feedback to the driver, especially as they're, they're new. So it's another opportunity to engage. Um, some critical elements of it are making sure that you acknowledge positive aspects of the of their performance, but also, you know, things that they can improve on. That's really any time you're doing coaching or performance feedback, you always want to have that element of it. Uh, make sure it's regular and it's going to help make the, the, uh, the employee and the new driver more comfortable with their work and it's open dialogue. So if you look at some key steps on the right side, the timing, you know, maybe right at the first week mark, making sure there's a touch point, 90 days, one year. Um, those are good timing points to start having that. We do, you know, at MCI, there should be quarterly, you know, quarterly feedback sessions is how we want to do it. Um, ask the employee what they think went well, what they can improve on, make sure there's engagement there, um, not just things from, from you. So it's a two-way dialogue. Um, a technique you can use is start, stop, continue. So, you know, here's things you're doing well, here's things you should start doing, here's things you should stop doing. Um, and just making sure that you're touching off on those is really going to communicate that. And some people have a rating system. So, hey, here's your performance review, here's your rating. I don't know that everyone needs to make it that formal, but that certainly can be an element of it. So critical process. So I think, Mike, you're going to hit on some areas of employee engagement. Yeah, thanks, Brent. So once we have them on board and we want to keep them, that engagement part that, that Brent was just talking about, that open communication is just huge. Um, it's a, a way not to just communicate, but to celebrate milestone successes um, within your company and what your employees may be doing outside of the company as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, money based. Uh, my year-end driver's meetings, yes, there would be an envelope that would go along with the, the safe driving, but, you know, when they would get the safe driving pin and as well as that certificate or the plaque to hang on their wall with certain milestones, that's what the, the operators were really finding the most gratitude out of. Uh, I always got the owners of the company involved, but I also would have the state police or even someone from FMCSA come uh, give a, a, a very brief talk and then let them present the, the awards and show the appreciation truly for the company and outside of the company as well. So don't feel as though everything has to be monetary based. Create team of, uh, events that can be part of the community, uh, whether it be a food drive, a clothing drive, participating in your local parades, um, what you do as a company, but also feel free to recognize um, your employees that may be doing uh, volunteer work in, in different organizations outside that they may have been recognized 
uh, by them, recognize them within their, their work peer group as well. Uh, one of the things to do is to make sure that when you're in, in, engaging with your employees, not just your active employees, but the ones that are there in the wings right now, the ones that may be furloughed, the ones that you wanna come back, uh, that you know we're going to come back, let them continue to be in the loop so they know what's going on at the company as well. So some key steps, again, be able to celebrate those milestones, whether it be a tenure, whether it be a mileage benchmark that they have for safe driving, um, host company events. Uh, I would do quarterly drivers meetings um, was always good. We always tied that together with a lunch because we all know they don't necessarily come for the information. But if there's food, you tend to get more people to come. Um, celebrate birthdays, um, birth of children, grandchildren, whether it be through your company newsletter or something like that. Um, create the award symbols, uh, pins. If, you, if your drivers wear vests, um, drivers always like to show their pride on their vest with their years of service and their years of safe driving. Uh, announce at your company meetings uh, throughout the year these milestones and use your social media to, to stand, show those really standout employees um, that have really done some uh, great accomplishments. And then some tokens of appreciation, whether it be a simple gift card, uh, a, a team pizza party or a cookout for if you have some different locations that you may have uh, some comp friendly competition between. Um, and, and one thing that goes a long, long way is a personalized handwritten note from, from management. Um, you know, I was very fortunate to work for an owner that even on the first day, he was not able to be there. There was a handwritten note on my desk waiting for me. And then when I would do a 5, 10, 15 year um, award for a, a milestone, uh, I would, even before the award was given out, there would be a handwritten thank you note from me in their mailbox. Just little things like that really go a long way. And, and of course, spread the word as far as you can, whether it be through your newsletter, uh, your website, and your social media. Next slide. So metrics, so how do we learn from our successes and where do we um, find our weaknesses to improve upon? So we typically don't have a tracking system over time. We just kind of live by, okay, we need to hire 20 drivers for this season, but we really don't measure how many we lost and why we lost them. So what you wanna do is when you build your matrix for your, your retention and your, uh, and your recruiting, you wanna make sure that your approach is working. So you'd have a baseline of if I have X number of vehicles, I wanna have Y number of drivers. Um, you know, I think it would be great if everybody could have 1.5 drivers per bus. Um, I think right now, a lot of people would be happy to have one driver per bus. Um, but you know, if you can set a goal like that to be able to say, I want 1.5. So if you set some matrix to look at, okay, so we hired 20 drivers last year. Of those 20 drivers, 10 are still with us. The 10 that left, some of them, how many stayed three months, six months, nine months? What, what was the period of time we were losing them? And then find out why. So look at that 90 days. You know, after you've made that, um, that hire, you've, you've gone through the orientation program. Hey, 90 days in, how's it going for you? You know, what, what questions do you have? You have all the tools that you need. Uh, and then at the one year break, and if you see that there's some things going on, um, like maybe you hit one of the slower seasons of the year, reach out to them and, and just to make sure that things are going okay. Um, we all know that if a driver, a mo specifically a motor coach operator, makes it through the first one year of their employment, they're probably going to stick around. Um, unless you're working on a contract or a scheduled service type of thing, um, where I had peaks and valleys of my season, I. I was very upfront with them in the beginning, but for them to be able to, to balance their financial health for their family to know when the money was gonna be there and then when it might be a little thin, things like that can also do it as well. Um, employee interviews, it's not just the ones that leave, it's the ones that stay. You know, why do you like us? Why do you stay here? What is it about the company that keeps you coming back every day? And then unfortunately, when you do have those uh, employees that decide that it's not the best fit for them or anymore, then, then why are you leaving? And I would venture to say that through your matrices, you're gonna see the opposites of what the people who's staying versus the people that are leaving are going to say. Some people may just be moving away. Some people may be having um, some changes in, the, in their family life where you know childcare and things like that may come into play but let's find out what those reasons are. Don't let them just go away without letting us know 
what we can do to make it better, potentially to keep them uh, on with us a bit longer or to prevent others from following uh, for the same reasons. Next slide. So here we are back to culture. Culture is so important because it really helps us attract employees and keep employees. Now, quote here is the most important thing in leadership is to set a culture. For a second, just picture yourself in your office, you're working along and the boss shows up, comes in with a smile. Good morning, how's your day going? Has a little conversation. Feels good, right? You just engage with your boss and everything's good. It's kind of set the tone. The next day the boss comes in, slams his phone down, slams his laptop down. What's going on? Everyone around's walking on eggshells. Like, okay, gotta keep my mouth shut. This is just kind of an example of such, such an important role leaders play in setting the culture, setting the tone, even just setting the tone for the day. So it's so important that as leaders that we're making sure that we're having the right positive attitude on a regular basis. And sometimes it's really hard, but it is important. I um, mean, that, that quote there is by Susan O'Malley. She's a former president of the NBA's um, Washington Bullets. And I think it's really appropriate to mention since this is women in buses, um, that she is also the first female president of a professional sports franchise. Pretty impressive. But anyways, you know, it's important to remember perception is a person's reality. So we may think we've got the greatest place to work, we treat our employees well, we've got the best equipment, but do our employees think that? Because if they don't, that's what matters. So we've got to make sure that when we're talking about perception that we're concerned with the perception from the employee's point of view, but not only just the employee's point of view, also within the community, within the work environment. Uh, when you come into work, do you have a safe working environment for them, as I mentioned before? And then perception with customers. All these things, the community and work environment and customers roll back up to the perception of the employee that they have on the company. And again, retention, recruiting, big, big things. Um, and it's, it's, uh, so it's not just, as I said, it's not just about saying you have a good culture, it's about your people believing it. We can go to the next slide. So before I go into what's next, I want you to, um, I want to recap for a couple minutes what we just discussed, because there was a lot of information here. First of all, this committee has provided a roadmap, a roadmap and a toolkit, and those tools will be useful for you to develop a plan on where to find and attract candidates for your company, and also how to hire the right candidate, because you always want to make sure you're hiring the right candidate and not just a candidate. If you're just hiring a candidate, you've got to constantly be hiring. And using the tools such as the elevator pitch, the company video, the job postings, they're all helpful tools in the hiring process. And then once we hire them, we need to keep them. That's the retention part. An important part of retention, develop a plan for onboarding and orientation. So they have a positive experience right from the beginning. Remember, first impressions are so important. And you also wanna make sure that you're setting your employees up for success. And these tools will help you do that. Also using things such as the mentor that was mentioned, setting expectations and providing feedback, they will all help with retention. And then finally circling back to culture, value your employees, show you care about them, respect them, listen to them, recognize them and communicate with them. And then, as Mike said, don't forget to measure your results. Keep track of your turnover and your reasons. And therefore, you can, when you look at your reasons for turnover, you can make adjustments to improve your retention. I keep saying, those are the most drivers win. Now, our next step for this, uh, for the committee is, um, we're really, first of all, I wanna say that we are very committed and dedicated to continuing helping out the industry to recruit and retrain retain drivers. So to do that, we're going to continue to use the tools or to issue tools in the work in the toolkit, I'm sorry, develop and launch improved website for hosting, encourage sharing of best practices and usage, and expand to draw new talent into our driver pool and using social media. At this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Aaron. Thank you. 
Um, so thank you all for giving your great insight. And um, I do have to say, we're very fortunate with this driving force to have such an incredibly talented group of people working on this for you. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a couple questions just pop through my chat here that I just wanted to address because we do have a couple minutes. Um, and before I do that as well, I do want to let you know we are going to have a follow up webinar in July um, to see how things have been working and I'm encouraging any feedback anyone has ahead of time, anything you'd like us to see tackle next, any best practices you're using, feel free to reach out to myself. My email is um, on the screen. We are going to release this PowerPoint today as well. Um, so everyone will be receiving that. And um, this session is also being recorded. So we will post that as well. But back to the question that came through is one of the questions was, um, what are some ways that you suggest we do to keep employees engaged? One of the concerns is that our drivers are working now, but in during the summer, they're going to be working less and we really don't want to lose them as we're going to need them again for the fall. Pam, maybe your best to give an answer to that one. Sure, that's a perfect opportunity to do something within the community. We have a lot of school bus drivers. Um, right now, like in the spring, we have a group of drivers that they try and collect prom dresses and then give them out to kids who can't afford it. During the summer, we're stuffing a bus, we you know, collect backpacks and school supplies, and we get the drivers all involved in helping that and in turn, you know, helping the community. So it's really a great time to, to try and do these different community events that brings everybody to create together and creates a great teamwork to, to, to accomplish what you need to get done. Great, thank you. Uh, there's, and you're right, there's a lot of little ways you can do that, um, you know, just to show them that you still care and you're a part of it. Um, one of the things that we have at our company is we have an internal um, Facebook page for our drivers. So they're you know, that's a way for us to stay in touch and post notes to them as well. And, you know, they have that constant, like, you know, good morning and, and just um, even where we don't necessarily see them all the time, they're staying engaged that way. So that, that would be my suggestion on what to do as well. And just one more um, tip. One of the things that we also do during the summer is in the middle of the shutdown period, we'll have an ice cream social or a picnic. Just invite everybody back in and let's just all get together and, and you know, they enjoy seeing each other because hopefully you've built this teamwork amongst your employees. Thank you. Um, so another question that popped in is, you know, we've gone over a lot of different tools. So where should someone start? There's a lot of information out there, um, but what's the most crucial thing to start if you're going to look at your company on how to start recruiting? Mike, you want to address that? Aaron, I think one of the things we need to do is uh, for each company to take a look at where they are in the process and the steps that we put out. Um, you know, the, the common thread that goes through this whole entire piece is culture. Um, take a look at yourself first. Why do you work there? Is it because your family owns the business or you've been a longtime employee? Um, how, would you have a family member come to work for you? How would you um, approach them, you know, to say, hey, why don't you come drive for us part time uh, or things like that and then dive into the toolbox. And then do you have an elevator pitch? Have you considered putting a company video together? Have you expanded your search uh, past the, the traditional means that you've been doing all of these years? Um, find out where you are in, in, in the, 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 the web of, of everything and then work your way out from there, because I don't think it's going to be the same for everybody. Great, thank you. And I think you're right. And that's kind of kind of the mentality of um, behind some of this information is that we understand that everyone is at a different point in the process. So we are trying to create tools. So no matter where you are, there is something to help you move forward, whether it be focusing on retaining your current employees or um, targeting new segments, which kind of leads into the next question that popped through. Um, how do you suggest we would start targeting any new segments? Then maybe one of the mics want to take that one. Um, sure. 
I, I can comment quickly just on the on the military. I, I, I think um, you know one approach is to to seek out the the bases, the military bases or reserve units that are near uh, your headquarters or um, a service area. And uh, we've got a little bit of this, these suggestions in the toolkit as well in terms of uh, how to reach out to the, the particular uh, military base. Uh, again, with all the investment in um, helping transitioning service members and veterans uh, find new jobs and new careers, there's typically gonna be a point of contact uh, that, that is uh, assigned to help those service members. And if you can find that uh, point of contact uh, at the base or the reserve unit and, and uh, work with them within their um, uh, you know, approach and format for a, a recruiting event similar to the one we're gonna do on the 12th, uh, that would be my suggestion on, on how to get started at least for the, the um, military recruiting. And Aaron, I'll jump in on the, the ones I covered as well. Um, I can tell you right now and in being involved in the, the first responder market, um, a lot of those people are really tired right now. They've worked a lot of extra hours over the past year. Um, they may not be your first point of contact, but stay in touch with them to see where they are. As I mentioned, um, they do rely on a, a second income uh, because of their time available to them. So they're always going to be looking. Uh, the folks in the 55 plus community you know, they've been like everybody else. They've been cooped up behind closed doors, maybe even more so, um, depending on the type of residence uh, that they live in for the past year. So they may be itching to get out a little bit more. And right now, driving schools and community colleges have some of their highest enrollments ever. So it's one of those ways that we could really entrench. And Aaron, just one more thing to think about. You know, when we're interviewing uh, potential um, employees, they, it may not be formal, but they're interviewing us as well because they're going to be going to different companies looking for different aspects. And it may not necessarily be about the pay, but again, going back to the culture, how were they greeted when they came in for the interview? You know, if you're still doing those in person, how long did they wait? Um, all of these different types of things, you know, at what level, how many times are you bringing them back? to be interviewed, you want it to be as simple, as streamlined as possible, and to give them an answer very, very quickly so you don't lose them to somebody else. Thank you, I think that's such a great closing point. It's that you really have to look within yourself and who you are as a company and really express that. Um, so we are just approaching our hour mark. So I just am going to wrap this up. Um, did anyone else have any last closing thoughts they had wanted to state? No. Okay, so if you are not a member of Women in Buses, um, we really encourage you to do so. If you want to email wib at buses.org to become a member. Um, and like I said, you will have full access to this driving force information and we will release this PowerPoint and post that on buses.org as well. So on behalf of all of us, I wanna thank you all for attending today and um, Please join us again on May the 5th for our next Wednesday webinar. Thank you, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Thanks.